I will cut this out. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Uh, it's already nine of us going down, going up. So we will start. Uh, and today we have Nicholas Frankel with us. And um, yeah, Nicholas, take it away. Um, thanks everybody to be here for this session about migrating your Spring Boot apps to like more functional uh, with Kotlin. I am Nicola Frankel. I've been nearly of like I've been in technical roles for nearly like 20 years, like starting as a developer, like team lead architect, solution architect. I've uh, always been a consultant, meaning that I went from customer to customer and, and doing projects. And uh, in the end, I had enough of like customers and projects and deadlines and middle managers and changing requirements and sliding deadlines and all that stuff. And like, uh, yeah, one year and a half ago, I went to be a developer advocate. So um, my main job now is to write blog posts, uh, to do like talks like this. Of course, I prefer to be on site, but it's always nice since we are all locked at home anyway to be able to uh, like talk to people who are also like me. And yeah, I love Spring and I love Kotlin, so hence this talk. I work for a company called Hazelka, so I don't know if, if you have been working in the Java ecosystem, in the GVM ecosystem. Um, like uh, we have two products. The main one is in memory data grid. And in memory data grid, basically you can think about like a distributed data structure. So you have like a map, a Java map, but then you can like use this simple API, uh, but the data is distributed among uh, all nodes in the cluster. And the second product is, is Jet. And it's the same also as like a kind of Java 8 stream API, but uh, it's distributed in memory. So if you want to do, uh, for example, operations that are uh, that you need them to be very, very fast, just for example, like fraud check or this kind of stuff, then, then in memory makes a lot of sense. Anyway, this is not the subject of today's talk. I hope, I guess, that here everybody is familiar with Spring Boot. Um, then you know that it's uh, a lot of convention over configuration. Like I remember when I started Spring projects, it was always a bit hard to start. Like I told the team, hey guys, um, let me work on the POM. So I crafted the POM. I took all the necessary dependencies, tried to match the, the, the right, the correct version, because at the time there was not even a bomb. Huh? It was mainly like do the, the dependency by yourself, manage them by yourself. Then you had to like create uh, a normal use case that went to the to the front end to the to the database. So, for example, you had uh, to have an, an internal view resolver uh, to to display the GSP, where, which were always in the same folder. Then came Spring Boot, and, and Spring Boot solved all those problems because. And now it's like Maven. Before Maven, you had end, and everybody is his own uh, build in his own project. And and Maven came and and in, industrialized everything. That now everybody has, I hope, <laughs> has its sources in RSC main Java or RSC main Kotlin. Even Gradle, which allows you to do a lot of crazy stuff. I mean, by default, you have SRC main, main Kotlin or RSC main Java. And Spring Boot does the same. And so I, I love Spring Boot from the start for that reason. Um, but because um, people are people, now they are complaining that, oh, it's the lot of magic. Um, and magic comes from annotations. And though I, I, I kind of uh, disagree with that like uh, bitching, because I think that it's not a lot to learn, I can understand the problem uh, it comes from. Uh, because when you have annotations, whether um, they are uh, used at, at runtime through reflection or at compile time through an annotation processor, the problem is you, you don't know uh, where they are used, by which um, class they are used. So sometimes if you are lucky, especially with Spring, it's pretty nicely done. Then there, in the Java doc, you, you have the, the, the class that uses the annotation. Um, but still the problem still stands. When, when you are like having like functional codes, you can say, oh, I have this functional code and I am in IntelliJ, I control click on the method, I check what it does, 
And if there is a method called inside, I can control click. And so I, I can drill down until I understand what happens. With annotation, you, you control click on the annotation, you see the code of the annotation, but again, it, it's very hard to understand how it's used. And so one of the solution is, oh, just remove the annotation and, and just have some functional configuration and everybody will be happy. So this is what I, I want to show you now. So I, I have a demo for that because otherwise it would be very, very boring. So I have my IntelliJ. Um, I will let you ask questions. So anytime you want to ask questions, perhaps I won't be able to uh, answer on, on the bat, but uh, Holger will be watching and he can interrupt me anytime he wants and I will be happy to explain. So here I've created a simple um, uh, Kotlin Spring project. So I went to start.spring.io. Uh, I chose the latest release at the time. So I, perhaps it's not exactly the latest release right now. And I am using uh, like Spring Data GPA. I am using uh, Spring Data uh, Web MVC. And because I'm using Kotlin, I have these Jackson modules, these Kotlin Reflects. And I'm using DevTools because I want, I mean, to be able to use uh, everything and to change the code without uh, restarting the application. For uh, the database, because I'm super lazy, I have this H2 database, which allows me to have the SQL in memory um, because I don't want to persist anything. Um, if, if you have been using um, Kotlin and Spring, uh, and also those two plugins, the Spring ones, which allows you to have by default open configurations and open bin methods, which are required by Kotlin, and also, uh, sorry, which are required by, by Spring, but by default, everything is closed in Kotlin, so you must open them. And this GPA plugin, which allows you to create at compile time a default no org constructor for your entities. And here you have the dependencies for the compiler. So now everything should be working. I will import by default like three stupid entities because I'm using spring starter data GPA. This file, so import.sql, it's also magic. It's not an annotation, but it's magic. So it will be read when my application starts and then it will get inserted into the in-memory database. So when I start the application, I will have this initialization. And so I have already data that I can query. I also have these like application dot, dot properties. Again, no annotation, but more magic. Like if I, I, I want, when I will query my, my endpoints, I will it will return JSON. I want the JSON to be nicely indented. And the minute of the application is here. So I assume everybody is familiar with both Spring and Kotlin. So I don't need to explain everything. But if again, if you have questions, please let me know. I have my main application. Here I have my main method, which allows me not to be embedded, nested into this migration. I can have this like top level function. I have the person controller, normal controller and I inject a person repository. This person repository inherits from paging and sorting repository so that at runtime Spring will create the implementation. And so I will rely on this runtime implementation here and here. So again, more magic. And finally, I can, I, I have defined a GPA entity that maps the table that I created here. So I guess that's, that's it if I, run it now, I will run it in debug mode and then I can curl it if when it's. When it has started. Okay, so I curl HTTP local host 8080 slash and then I don't remember the endpoint the endpoint is person. So I have all three persons. Good. And then I can query one single person and it gives me the right person. Okay. Now um, I have a question for you. So I don't know how you will react if you can use the chat. I want to tell me 
where is the place where there are um, the most annotations? Where is the place that I should remove um, to, to remove the most magic? So I, I'm waiting for your feedback if you have the chat. Not, and not sure we have, can... Yeah, we have 16 people and a little delay. I, I will jump in here. So I'll, if, if I could have an educated guess, it's very likely around um, either in the controller or in the um, uh, uh, database areas, uh, repositories, and all this this fun stuff. Yeah. So I, I will I will remove the annotation. So as you mentioned, the controller has the most annotation. The controller has like four annotations, like two get mappings, one path variable, one rest controller. So obviously, it's the place where I need to remove annotations. And the good thing is we we can do that already um, with the Spring framework, like. The Spring Framework already contains a DSL that allows you to have functional declaration of endpoints. In previous versions, um, this API, it was required um, to be reactive. So if you wanted to have functional declaration of endpoints, then you were required to use the reactive way. But since I don't remember which version, you can use it with, now it's called WebFN. So it's the functional declaration of servlets. So we, we will just have this add bin stuff, and then we can declare our, um, so I, roots. And I need to do some like static imports because otherwise it doesn't look super nice like this. And now I can, so this is the, for the first one, this is the same as this one. So we can remove this one. And then we can add another root. And I can remove this one. And of course, because now this class is empty, I can remove everything. And again, I can try to do some static imports. And now I should have the same stuff. So I will just compile because I'm, I'm using the dev tools. Um, either the compilation is okay and then Hotspot will do, do its stuff or it's not okay. And then I will just restart the class loader that loads the classes, which basically means that it's very, very fast. So if I redo it, that, I've got the same result. And here you can see that, yes, it, 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 no more annotation. Everything is declarative and, and it looks super nice. Well, it looks super nice, but you, you see these handler functions here is, is, is like conflating the routing itself and, and what it does. Um, so with um, this functional way of stuff, Spring also introduced something called the handler. So you should put the logic like in, in a handler in a handler object. So here I, I, I just created a dedicated handler. It's just a copy paste of this code, huh? just a stupid copy paste. I just need a way to inject this handler here. So I will first like convert it to a block body and then I can here create a handler of type person handler. I will inject my repository. And now I can say here, handler dot read one and I pass IT and here handler dot read all and I pass IT. Uh, it's not a val, um, it's not a var, sorry, it's a val because I don't need to change it. And if you prefer to have reference, then let's do some references. It's all the same. Compile and restart. So now Hotspot cannot do it. So the class loading will just be done through DevTools. So it still works. I'm trying another one. Yes, it still works. So this is nice. 
Um, but actually, you don't need Kotlin to do that. Um, this, uh, this DSL is already um, usable by Java. Um, the good thing is, again, inside of, I don't remember which version of a Spring, then they introduce Kotlin codes. And in that case, we can leverage Kotlin to have a Kotlin DSL. So not the general WebFN DSL, but the Kotlin DSL. And for that, we have something called a router. And you can see that the difference is like very, very nice. You, you don't need all that craft. Move it. And compile again. And let's check that it works. Still works. So that's good. Uh, basically, we had four annotations and we removed uh, three annotations, so we still have one annotation, so we want three annotations. So th there is still magic, but there is there is less magic. I hope you agree with me and that you are happy. So sh shall I stop there? Who is happy with that and who is not happy? Who, sh who says it's fine, we should stop there? And who, who says, no, we should go further because we have still too much magic? Hang on a second, let's see. Yeah. So we had two two guys. Thanks, by the way, to oh, I, sorry for screwing your name, Raswan and Sahil, uh, who had the controller answer as well. And um, so let's see when they come back. Uh, uh, no feedback on there. If you ask me, and if you ask the question this way, I think there is we can do better. Um, you think you can do better? Okay. No, no, not me. I think you can do better. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So, um, so I ah, go I've... further. Chris, Christoph just just jumped in and uh, said, "Go further." Yeah, that that's that's of course that that's a trick question. I expect you to to ask me to beg me to go further. Otherwise, it's the end Please. of the, the demo, and and it's twenty minutes, and you have all the evening for yourself. But you are still here and you're waiting to, to have some entertainment. So um, so I have this issue that here, for example, I have a bean here, I have on single bean, but perhaps uh, in your real application, you might have 10 beans, 20 beans or whatever. So the bean annotation is, is an issue. And, and I, I want to remove this bean annotation as much as possible. So for that, there is another DSL. And there is this router DSL and there is this like bean DSL. So I will create this beans DSL. And now what I need to do is to put that definition inside here. And here I can remove that. And now I need a way, because here we have regular function. So I have two problems. A pro first problem, I need to call this function. So how should I call this function? So there is an extension function now on, on run application. So on Spring application, I, I can add uh, a, an initializer. And this beans functions is actually of type bin definition DSL. And bin definition DSL, hey, I want the bin. This bin definition, an application. So I, I have no issue. I can here like explicit, explicit to be called. Now I, I have another issue. And this issue is where do I get to re, with this repository? How I, my connection seems to be unstable. I hope I didn't lose you. Like in normal Spring applications, um, you would like inject this repository like this. And here you would somehow get it somewhere. But the problem is at this point on this line, the repository doesn't exist because the application hasn't started yet. So it's a, a, an egg and chicken problem. You want to call the beans method, which requires a repository, but you need the, the, the application to have started to have the repository. So how, how can we handle it? Well, we, we can do it like that, but you won't like what you see. Let's 
not here. Ah. Sorry, I lost one. It's bean. Everything is a bean, so I forgot to put it in a bean. And yeah, now, before I explain further, I will like try to prove you that it works. I will install the next version of Kotlin next time. So it still works. So this is like the most magic stuff of all the most magic stuff. This is worse than annotations. Um, so le let me like take some steps to, to, to show you how it works. And afterwards you will like be convinced that it's not magic, that it's just like regular Kotlin. So those are the steps that are required. This like uh, bin definition um, takes a person handler and this person handler require a bin repository. Now, if you were in charge of the code and you had a, a, a handle on the context, you could say, hey, context.getBean and give me the bean of type person repository dot class. That's not what you should do when you are writing application code, but you are when you are uh, writing library code, then it's perfectly okay to like explicitly get a, a reference on the context and, and do a get bean. When you are an application, everything should be injected on your app. Hmm? This is like inversion of control. But if you are a library, it's perfectly fine to, to, to do the injection. So to get the context and to do a context.get bean. I hope it's okay at this point. So if I could have a handle on, on the context, and let's suppose we have a handle on the context, we could say uh, context.get bean and, and, and say person repository.class. Now we have this uh, nice property uh, of Kotlin that says, oh, Actually, we don't need to pass the person repository uh, dot class. And the reason for that is if Kotlin could give you uh, Rayfi generics, then that wouldn't be necessary. And the problem in Java is we don't have Rayfi generics. Like basically, um, if we don't pass this stuff, huh, if this is here, and we say here foo or whatever, it's the same bytecode. So there is no way when you are using generics that you know which class is qualifying this method in Java. And now what if I told you that basically Kotlin allows you to have reified generics? That would solve both our problems. So we assume that we have access to the context and we assume that we have reified generics. And, and let's look at the, at the uh, ref method. Oh, sorry, I was a bit, I was a bit fast. Let's get back here. We have refi generic, but it's a trick. It's not really refi generic because Kotlin bytecode must be compatible with the general GVM bytecode and the GVM bytecode doesn't allow for refi generic. It's able to refi it because here we say it's in line. So at compile time, Instead of, of coding, of, of, of compiling a call to the method, it just copy pastes the snippets every time. So every time you see a ref, actually you get a context.getBean that gets invoked automatically. And, and then afterwards, then it's easy to get this refi because since it's copy paste, we know at the call site what the type is. And you see here, we have the reference on the context.getBean. So, I hope now at this point, you understand there is no magic involved. The last point is, hey, here we don't need person repository. Just like when you have a person handler and you inject a type foo or a type bar or a type anything, how does Spring knows that, hey, this is the type? Yeah, because here by reflection, it gets a handle on the constructor and it knows that it must inject a bin of type 
person repository of foo or bar. So this is also not required. So this is just what I've written before, person handler and ref. And now we can do, uh, we can go a bit further. We can say, hey, we need a bin of type person handler. Here we need to say what type it is because it, it, it cannot be inferred, the compiler uh, or, or the runtime cannot infer what it will be. So we, we say we need a, time, a, a, a bin of type person handler and it will try to invoke the constructor, but it will see that the constructor requires a bin of type person repository, which is part of the context. So it will inject it and then it will create the bin of type person handler. So what I've written before, so I hope this magic now is no more magic, is like normal code. So what I've written here can, can be written in different way. Uh, so here I can have a bin of type person handler. And oops, and here I can say, hmm, here I have a ref of type person handler. This is another way to, to, to do that. So here I have like a, a dedicated bin that will be part of the context. And here I say, oh, get me in the context, the reference to a person handler. So the difference is here, I, I have a bin in the context and before that was just an anonymous bin. So in general, I prefer beans to be as anonymous as possible, as scoped as possible, because here I don't need to have a person handler that needs to be shared among different other beans. And now it's it's okay. I think we, we did a pretty good job. I have annotation. Those annotations are GP annotations. They are not they are not related to Spring. I cannot do one annotation. I have one annotation I cannot get rid of. So now I'm asking you, is that okay with you or should I go further? There must be still more you can show us. Let's see. Of course, there, there, there is more I can show you, but who is happy with that version? Like one annotation, one annotation, small, meager annotation, harmless annotation. Yep. There is, uh, Carlos asks, uh, can you not join bean p repository with bean, so like bean p uh, repository? So there seems to be some, some room for optimization. Sorry, could you repeat the comments? Uh, I'm not sure I understood. And he asks you to, to continue. Let me copy this question because it is okay. It pops in here, so I I, I write it down in the Zoom chat. So okay. Can, here we go. And um, can you so join bean repository with bean? So like bean. Um, yes. The thing is, um, like if I do a bean of type person repository. But here I have opened something. So either I do like that, or if there is a Lambda, then I must say something that is inside the Lambda. So in general, I, I would do something like that. Oops. Then I, I define a bin of type person repository. And here I can create a ref, but it's useless because here I, I didn't create it. What I would do is here, if you want me to do like this, I can here create a bin of type person handler. And here I can say, hey, just get me the type person handler. Or if you don't want to create variable, you can do also like that. I don't like, to be honest, I, I don't like this trying to be smart stuff. I prefer to be explicit. And as I mentioned before here, that means that 
I will have uh, one bin which is accessible by anybody. So my, 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 my context grows by one bin more. And in that case here, it is not necessary. I prefer like not to have bins if I can. So this is like a normal standard, like local variable. So I, I prefer this. I don't know if I answered the questions, but otherwise I, I didn't understand the question. It's all right. So yes, I, sorry, um, I can actually go a bit further, um, but you need to let go of a lot of stuff. Because Christoph Fry uh, and ah, before I go on, uh, Carlos. So uh, if if you if you want to challenge it more, um, just pop in the question. I will put it in. Oh no, he says okay, thanks. And uh, Christoph Fry just said, uh, get rid of all annotations. He, he wants me to get yeah, yeah yeah. I know that the annotations are not popular. Again, I, I'm I'm not sure. It's it, you know it, it's very funny because before. It took a long time to, to write Spring projects. So, so people were asking for, for easier configuration. Now we have easier configuration. They, they say, hey, we want to be more in control. So we will switch completely the other way. So like my, my conclusion, and, and I'm French, is that um, all developers are like French. They are complaining all the time. They are never happy. Um, anyway, so I, I can go a bit further, yes. Um, again, that needs to be like, I won't code the stuff because it's really like everything needs to be changed. It takes a bit of time to get the stuff to compile because it needs here. And at, at that, you, you will see it, it's very, very similar. lost your sound but you might notice some differences so the first is the most important stuff is the pom is completely different the first is i i told you before that the, the beginning of um the uh, the functional declaration took place in the reactive space and now there is this web fn so you can use functional declaration with traditional servlets however if you want to remove every annotation, then you must go reactive in all the other places at this time, at least. So for example, there is no data um, Spring Data GPA anymore. Now you must use uh, the Spring Data R2 DBC, the, like the, the reactive way to access the database. Um, this is what you, the, main, the main point, it's Kofu. I will talk about it later. And um, because you are using the reactive access to the database, then you cannot use the standard H2 database. You must use the, the reactive uh, version of H2. You must do a lot of stuff by yourself. Like you remember before I had these properties, I have removed the properties. I had a SQL a script. Uh, I remove the SQL script because there is no magic anymore at all, but no magic. So everything is explicit. So here, for example, first I must initialize the database and initializing the database means I need to create my own database, my own schema by myself, because I'm not relying on GPA, which relies on Hibernate, which uh, automatically creates the schema out of your entities. I need to do that by myself, fine. And I need to insert by myself. So I, I, the, the whole data that I had before, now I need to take care of it in code. And the insert that was given me by Spring Data GPA with the person repository, I need to code it as well. So I, I need to code the insert itself because no more magic, no more creation of the Spring Data repository and dot, uh, at runtime. And of course, the rest, everything needs to be created. Because we are using uh, this um, reactive way to access data, you, you must use the, the database clients. So here in the person repository, 
at least, sorry, you, you create it here. At least you have access uh, uh, to a uh, database clients because there is a bit of DSL that allows you to do that. And that's the second lesson here. You have like everything now has become a DSL. So you have this application DSL. We already had this bin definition DSL. We already had this web MDC server DSL. We are, sorry, we already had this router DSL. Now we add a web MDC server DSL around it. And now we have these converters, which is also a DSL. Everything is a DSL. So everything is explicit. Everything is a DSL. The good thing about that is now you can check, hey, like if I want to, to, to understand what this, this listener does, then of course I need to download the sources, but I can click and I will see exactly the codes that, um, that, that it does, uh, which was not the case again for annotation. Now, on the, on the, it's not a Spring Boot application anymore. It's not a Spring Boot application anymore. It's a standard Kotlin application. So if I run it, I just run it with the main and there is no magic at all. On the good side, it starts super, super fast, like less than one second, because there is no reflection or no nothing. Everything is explicit. Now, if, <clears throat> sorry. Now, if I do my curl, I notice that my nice output also is gone because the property is gone. So I need to code it. But there is a civil lining to every cloud. So here, the good thing is since everything is a DSL, I can access every property directly in my IDE. So it takes a bit of time, yes. And now I will try to compile it. I don't have DevTools anymore. Let's try if it works. No, it doesn't work, so I need to restart it explicitly. And now I have my indentation again. So there are both good sides and bad sides, like every, every time, and, and there are trade-offs. So if, if you want to remove everything to be explicit, then I urge you to go to see this Kofu stuff. So let, let's talk about Kofu a bit. So um, like this is an initiative led by Sébastien Deleuze. Um, and is like very pro Kotlin. Is he, he, he works in, in the Spring Boot team, and he provided this Spring Foo stuff. Uh, at some point, there was the both API. There was one API uh, for Kotlin called Kofu, one API for Java called Jafu. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the the Jafu uh, initiative was stopped because uh, basically like Java doesn't lend itself very nicely to, to do DSL. What, what you must understand about, about uh, Kofu is that it's experimental. Like really, it's an incubator for experiments. So basically, uh, Sebastian will provide some stuff in Kofu. Um, he will let the community use it, play with it, whatever. And, and then um, uh, we will decide, well, we, uh, he probably uh, with the team will decide whether it's a good idea and people are loving it and it should be part of Spring itself, not as a like dedicated jar, but really like inside of Spring. And then it will migrate it from Kofu to main Spring or it's not interesting. So it, it, you must be very careful um, using it in production because it's really like it's, it's a sandbox, huh? it's a playground. And there are some like uh, uh, principles that are behind this uh, like uh, spring foo stuff. So basically DSL, as I mentioned, no annotations, no magic, no sigillib, no, uh, no reflection, or at least the, 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 the least reflection you can use. And if, if, you, if, you, if you know a bit, for example, about uh, Graal VM and its native image executables, then you understand that it's naturally the way we, we, we will go. Like one of the good thing about uh, Graal VM is that you can pass it a jar or a class, and then it, out of this bytecode, it will create a native executable. And the good thing about the native executable is that 
the startup time is very, very fast and the memory consumption is very low compared to a full-fledged GVM. The downside is that it's good for serverless when you need a very fast startup time, but it's not that great for long running processes because if you are a Java developer or you have been developing on the GVM, you know that the good thing about the GVM, the benefits of the GVM is that it can adapt the, 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 the compiled codes to the workloads. Uh, whereas when, when you, you statically compile a program, then you just try to guess what the workload will be. And then, well, you might be right, you might be wrong, you don't know. But the, the, the GVM has uh, repeatedly uh, won uh, like performance contest against C or C++ or a, a native executables for long running process because of this adaptability. Anyway, the GVM is not great if you do serverless, for example, because the startup time is, is too long. You want to like spin on processes very, very fast and, and switch them off also quite fast. So the, the, the benefits of the GVM in the serverless space, for example, um, you, you have none. And then the memory consumption is, is, is too high. So in the cloud, it will, it will cost you much more money. Um, and, and so if you are using this um, Kofu stuff, which removes everything that's the native executable ahead of time compilation hates, like, like reflection, for example, because when, when you have this ahead of time compilation, it will, it will try to do at compile time what it does at runtime. So it will run through all the passes, but uh, reflection doesn't exist. So it will remove classes because it, it won't try to execute them. And, and so you will have an, a non-working executable in the end. So if you remove reflection uh, and sigillib and proxies and all the stuff that uh, Spring is like famous or infamous for, then you, you can like have an, an easy configuration of the, of the uh, Graal VM native executable ahead of time compilation. And, and you can create like very, very um, fast starting and low consuming, low memory consuming uh, executables. Um, this is a bit old already. Eh? It's, it's like more than six months ago. So basically, it was this, what I showed you, just the last stuff where you need to migrate to, um, to, to have reactive database access is uh, 0.2 of Kofu. And normally, the 0 0.3 uh, should have um, given you like normal standard data GDBC support. So no need to migrate to reactive. However, I, I noticed that um, like, uh, Sebastian took a bit of, of like a, a long vacations or perhaps worked on something completely unrelated on the meantime. So the 0 0.3 is not available yet. And uh, if you want to use Kofu, you, you need to go to Reactive. So a couple of uh, takeaways for this session is um, if you want to remove the magic, uh, you should uh, move your controllers to roots because controllers are just a nest of annotations and you move the logic to handlers. Uh, remember to use the Kotlin Beans DSL. Of course, the Kotlin Roots DSL is used um, by, by the roots and, and not reactive is not necessary anymore. Uh, you can use this web FN way of defining your servlets uh, up to a point where you need to use Kofu and at this point Kofu is reactive for the database, for example. And of course, the main takeaway is that Spring Boot loves Kotlin and, and if, you, if you love both, then it's a perfect world. Um, thanks for your attention. Uh, you can read my blog, you can follow me on Twitter, and more importantly, you can get the, the repository and, and try to, to use it uh, like I did and perhaps redo it at home and check. And perhaps you will have more questions or will you will understand something that was not understood like in a more deep fashion. And now we have time for questions, I guess. We do indeed. We do indeed. We do have a few questions. So let's, I will just ask them in order. I hope everyone is fine with this. So Sahil asked, uh, does this functional approach have any performance benefits over annotations? Yes, as I mentioned, you, you, uh, the problem of the annotation is at startup time, you need to do a lot of reflection. So the, the startup time, most of the time with this explicit functional declaration, is like decreased a lot. 
So yeah, you will be faster at starting. Uh, I need, I need, need uh, somehow more arms or fingers. Sorry, yeah, perfect. Uh, and then uh, Abhinandan, and sorry if I screwed this as well, uh, ask a just a bit related question, but I think it's a good, good question in itself, is uh, how to convince our team to migrate to Kotlin-based Spring Boot who are comfortable writing in Java? That's always a question I get asked. How yeah. do I convince somebody? My, I, I, I will be a bit, um, let's say, straightforward. Um, you don't convince people if they don't want to be convinced. Uh, you can try to do it, you can show them, and it will be much easier if you find another company that uh, already is convinced. I know yeah. it's not a great answer. It's not what you wanted to, uh, the, the, the answer you wanted, but that's my uh, way in general. Like I'm trying, hey, really nicely. Same goes for middle managers. If they don't want you to use Kotlin, just check another company that already does it. It will be much easier. Yeah. I mean, uh, sometimes it's, it's, it's definitely worth a try to not go straight away. Asking is always a good place to start with. And um, from my perspective of what I saw is that it is usually um, many developers start liking it from the very, very early days on you use it to just show it to them. And then the, the classic thing is like, I'll start doing some tests, for example, in Kotlin and just explain them, have knowledge share sessions. And then if your manager and or your colleagues are still kind of resisting, then you have this, what you just, uh, uh, this advice, what Nicholas just gave us. Um, next one, Carlos asked, uh, is it possible to share the repository where the code is located? You just did this. I will put the yeah. I will put the link into the description afterwards as well. Um, not sure if you can share this. Twitter, I will tweet the slides as well. So if this. you follow me on Twitter, or even if you don't want to follow me, but you just check, I will I will tweet the, the link to the slide. Perfect. I will also uh, then put the link on to this tweet. Uh, please remind me if I forget it. Then we have Rasvan. Uh, what's the point of using a reactive database, but not the WebFlux version of Spring and still using WebMVC? Because I'm uh, like deeply convinced that um, it, it's a good question. Um, there is like no point. But the thing is, I'm deeply convinced that a reactive way of doing stuff might be beneficial for like 5% of developers of the use case. Like most of the time you don't need reactive. Um, I'm not trying to say reactive is bad. I'm trying to say that there, there is a trade-off involved. So first, it's very hard to like start thinking in a reactive way, okay. The second, it's very hard to debug when, when you have like an issues in, in, in reactive codes. Uh, I, I think it's only like a couple of months since you can have um, a nice stack trace, a real good, useful stack trace. Um, so the, 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 this reactive uh, way of doing things is only good uh, if you are, for example, uh, trying to, be, to, to consume as, as less uh, resources as possible because you're in, in the cloud, for example. And you have trade-off. It costs you more to develop. You must have like more skilled developers. And here, my point was not to show you reactive. My point was to show how you can migrate to functional. And in the end, I was forced because I didn't want to do it to use reactive. I was just forced. So yes, I should also, if you, if in a real way, you are here, you have no benefit. But I also have no benefit to use reactive at all. I didn't want that. It's just that Spring Kofu at this moment doesn't allow me to keep my H2 database and just use regular SQL. Right. Uh, also, just just from what I had, um, I just had a project where uh, long ago someone decided to use Webflux. Um, it's still, I think Webflux itself is still not quite there yet. So you lose a lot of compatibility to other spring goodies. 
um, just to keep this in mind, I might be wrong, but I did some 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 research on this, and uh, for what we tried to do, it was still hard because everything is working just fine with WebMVC, um, and but with WebFlux because the way um, the, the whole reactive idea behind it and the whole new way of dealing with requests brings new challenges, which means not everything works. Things like um, logging and um, uh, what was the other one? The, the the filters are always a challenge, and logging not the normal logging, but if you if you try to to add some log based plugins or log play based frameworks, but it's just what I had just just to keep this in mind. Little disclaimer. Um, next one, uh, we uh, yeah. Carlos again, Nicholas, you said before it is experimental, right? So when you do, when do you think it will be some, uh, there will be something stable? Um, it will never be stable in the way that it will never be, ex well, let's say that the current philosophy, because the philosophy might change. I'm not, I'm not the developer behind it. The current philosophy is, is just a sandbox. So they will put stuff in there, community will use it, community will say, oh, it's good, it's not so good, it must be changed. And in the end, they might move it, they might move it to the main Spring Framework JAR. That, that's, that, that's the only thing they will do, that this, this Kofu stuff will stay as a sandbox. So the only thing that you might see is, hey, inside Spring MVC, I have a new DSL. That's what will happen, but Kofu itself should never be used in product. Well, it's up to you, of course, definitely. But let's say the advice, the friendly advice is don't use it in production. Uh, I wasn't even muted. Sorry. Perfect. Um, thanks. And then the next one, Raswan again. Uh, the problem with removing annotations is that you lose the Spring Doc auto generation of Swagger definitions which is essentially a statement, but I thought it's worth mentioning. I would like to hear your, your counter argument. I have none. I have no counter arguments. You, you make choices. Uh, in, that, that's funny because I always say in, 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 in IT, we, we are rational engineers, but um, people always want to have like black or white answers. Um, I'm definitely not this kind of guy. I'm saying, for me, um, annotations brought a lot of good stuff. Um, and I, though I understand the argument saying, hey, but we want to understand. Yeah, but I want to, uh, like, I want to focus on, on, on business value. I want to, to produce business value. So if I, I'm, I'm willing to let go of some of the stuff that I don't understand, I don't need to. I just want to know that it worked. And, and to continue working on my on developing my, my business logic. Just as we have built abstractions upon abstractions upon abstractions, like who codes here in assembly? I mean, the reason we are not coding in assembly is also the reason why we are able to do like so much more complex software today. Because you isolate, isolate yourself from the, 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 let's say the teeny gritty details. You, you don't want to care about, hey, here I move like memory from, from this place to this place. You are happy to let the, the GVM do it for you. And here I'm saying it, it's, for me, it's the same. However, I understand if you, if you are telling me, hey, we are a, a team of developers, we must have control over everything and we must control everything, that's fine. And then just use that. But the opposite side is, you will need to reinvent the wheel where uh, this approach is not compatible or doesn't bring you the benefits of annotations. You mentioned, for example, Swagger. It's up to you. It's and only in your context you can decide whether hey, it's a good move or no, it's a bad move. Here, I'm just to show you that hey, this exists and here you can use it. And if you have people saying, hey, but I don't, I, I, I hate Spring because it, it uses XML. You, you can see a lot of people who are still saying, hey, Spring is shit because you are using so much XML and blah, blah, blah. Well, okay, guys, here, you see, we are not using XML, we are using code. Oh, but I hate annotations. Okay, but here you have like a few annotations and you can describe everything in, in, in using like functional DSL. Ah, okay, 
and perhaps it's it's a way for you to like we, we are talking about convincing it, it perhaps it's it's a way to convince people to use spring in a way that you don't like so much but the benefits is at least you can rely on all the good stuff that you already know and, and just have some parts that are not exactly like you want them to be but at least all the team agrees to use the same framework with all the, the code that is already been tested and, and gives you value already. So it, it's not up to me to say, hey, you should do this and you should do that. All right. And then Philip Meyer wrote, uh, thanks for the talk. If I understood it correctly, I could mix the Kotlin roots DSL with the usual magic, exam uh, for example, uh, in the database access layer. Right now, we try to keep the, our application logic as free of spring as possible, hexagonal architecture. Going more functional looks like a good attempt here. <laughs> that was that was short, sweet, and straight. <laughs> Perfect. So, uh, beside a another discussion around what on well, based on this one with why not going with another framework or why using a framework at all, uh, which is not quite topic on topic. Um, I, think... I just recently retweeted uh, one post I, I've written some time ago about yeah why you should use a framework or why you won't because right now we are in a it's a time frame where oh no you shouldn't use a framework at all which I believe is is just crap is very dogmatic and so just check um, my Twitter accounts if you don't want to subscribe and check, it's called on containers and frameworks or, or check on my blog and do a Google search on that. And you can see, I mean, I, I've written a bl long blog post. You might agree with it, you might disagree with it, that's fine, uh, but at least it give you some of my arguments so that I don't, I don't have to repeat them. And uh, Twitter is a good place to have a discussion, I heard. Um, right, yeah. So I think we are pretty much spot on on the hour um not that we targeted it thank you so much thanks a lot for your invite it was very nice i thanks. hope i will be able to come to berlin one day and and to have another talk in person yes please uh, <laughs> well it doesn't depend on the on me unfortunately at the moment no 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 no. well we all know we all know uh but uh corona will will go away some or we will find a solution for this one and uh, yes please i owe you a beer um no Thank right. you, Kambia, Abba. Thank you. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Then um, we will find something. I will, will get you a little present. Uh, perfect. Then um, to everyone else, thanks for joining. If thanks you liked it, press this like button and subscribe. And see you in a month's time. Thank you. Bye bye. Cheers. Thank you for Alice.